That's better. There we go. Good afternoon and welcome. Just uh, 40 years ago, this fall, my wife and I moved to Campion Academy and we experienced our first alumni weekend here at Campion. My name is Steve Hall. I taught band here at the Academy from 1982 to 1986. And uh, Loveland, Colorado, and Colorado in general is still one of our most favorite places that we ever lived. And we're always happy to come back to Colorado. The group in front of you this afternoon is made up of uh, alumni. We have actually have a couple of current students in the group. We have a number of former band directors from the academy here, and then we have a group of friends. So we're kind of a mixed group, but uh, we got together Thursday night and had a bit of a rehearsal. We rehearsed again last evening, and today we're going to play what we learned for you. And uh, we are going to have a good time doing it, and we trust you will have a good time uh, listening to us. So our first number was uh, Fanfare and Chorus by Dietrich Buxtehuda, a composer of the uh, oh, middle Baroque period, uh, one of the foremost composers of Europe at that time. He is the organist of uh, St. Mary's Church in Lübeck, Germany, and uh, was considered uh, one of the leading organists and composers of the time. As a matter of fact, he was a big influence on other uh, composers of that era, era including uh, George Frederick Handel, who later wrote The Messiah, and Johann Sebastian Bach. The story is told about how Bach, at the age of 20, walked over 250 miles from Arnstadt in Germany to Lübeck to hear Buxtehude play the organ and to study with him. He spent three months there with him. And uh, eventually, uh, Again, according to legend, Buxtehude offered the position of St. Mary's Church organist to both Handel and to Bach, but both of them turned it down because one of the conditions of accepting the job was that they had to marry Buxtehude's oldest daughter. <laughs> so um, for whatever reason, they decided they weren't going to do that, and they both, of course, went on to bigger careers elsewhere anyway. Our next number is going to be All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. It was written by um, Edward Perronet in 1779, the text. And it's number 229 in your hymnals if you want to follow along the words. The tune from the hymnal is not quite the same. We're using a tune today called Diadem instead of the tune that you'll find in the hymnal. Uh, the arrangement is by uh, a a woman composer and arranger who was very well known back in the 60s. Those of you of an age may remember the Anita Kerr singers, did a lot of uh, pop and what might be called easy listening music. Well, she also wrote a lot of uh, arrangements for brass and for other mediums of sacred and gospel music as well. And it's quite a few brass arrangements, and we're going to do this one now, uh, arranged by Anita Kerr, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Thank you. 
Ralph Carmichael is another name that uh, many of you might remember from the 60s and 70s. Ralph Carmichael was an ordained Pentecostal minister, but he wrote for music and arranged music for a number of years for the Billy Graham Crusades and the movies that Billy Graham uh, Company put out. He later on became a uh, arranger and composer for a number of popular television shows and movies in Hollywood and did a lot of work eventually with uh, well-known singers such as uh, Bing Crosby and, um, oh shoot, she's from Nat King Cole and uh, Rosemary Clooney, that's what I was trying to think of, yes, from Cincinnati, my wife's hometown, anyway, um, and, as well as others. But he never forgot his roots in gospel music and uh, did, again, did a lot of arranging of gospel songs for all kinds of mediums, choirs, soloists, uh, orchestras, bands, and brass ensembles. Put out a couple of albums of uh, brass ensemble music, which he arranged and composed. We're going to do one of them for you today. This is uh, In the Cross of Christ I Glory. It's number 237 in your hymnals if you'd like to follow along. American hymn writers of all time, you'll find uh, 19 of her hymn texts are in the uh, SDA hymnal, which is a, a pretty good number. Uh, <clears throat> 
This song was uh, set to music by William Howard Doan, and it never even became widely popular in the U.S. until sometime in the 1950s when Billy Graham began using it in his crusades and it became better known. It had been um, used for a long time, over 100 years, in uh, Great Britain in one form or another, at least almost 100 years in one form or another. But uh, in the U.S., it's only been around uh, since the 1950s. But it's uh, widely used today. It's in most church hymnals. And I think it's uh, number 341 in, in your hymnal in front of you. Uh, this arrangement, I have to mention, was written by a former student of mine at Union College, Tim Rumsey. Uh, Tim was a, a very fine trumpet player and a piano player and composer and arranger. I started playing Tim's music when he was still in academy in high school. Uh, he was arranging music for brass groups and I started performing them with my brass group at Union College. Nowadays you can find his music is distributed and published by uh, major music publishing companies including Tim's own company which is Laudation Press. So this is uh, Tim Rumsey's arrangement of To God Be the Glory. turn the next portion of the program over to Dr. Devin Howard, a, I forget what year you were, 99. a 99 graduate of Campion Academy. 
Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be home and a pleasure to be invited to participate this afternoon with so many fine colleagues and friends on the stage here. I uh, was given a trumpet at the age of six and two weeks later it mysteriously disappeared <laughs> and thus ended my brass career. But I have maintained connection with brass as an organist, of course, and so I'm happy to participate as an honorary brass player today. Uh, I have two selections for you uh, today, and the first is a, a modern composition. And uh, I just like to point out to people, the organ is over 2,000 years old, and it has a wealth of music, which continues to today. And uh, this particular composition makes use of some of the more subtle aspects of what an organ does. And it's particularly interesting to me because it's by a Navajo composer who's most known for his piano compositions and performing. And I grew up, of course, uh, my first years in the San Luis Valley, um, which was right on the edge of the Navajo Nation, marked by mountain peaks, the eastern edge being Mount Blanca. So I've always been interested in Navajo culture, and my uncle also did a dissertation on their culture. So when I found out that Connor Chi, is his name, had composed his first piece for the organ, I had to learn it. And I bought the music online in the concert when I was hearing it. And uh, I <clears throat> hope that you enjoy Hotso, which roughly translates to beauty and balance.
Giovanni Gabrielli was born somewhere between 1554 and 1557 in Venice, Italy. He was the, um, in a musical family. He had an uncle, Andrea Gabrielli, who was a, a famous composer and organist, but uh, he grew up to be an organist composer himself, was appointed eventually the head organist at St. Mark's Basilica in Venice, the same one that's uh, in danger of being flooded into the ocean nowadays, but uh, was the head organist there for a long time, and again was one of the foremost composers in Europe then and even considered so today of the late Renaissance to early Baroque period of music. Um, one of the many mediums that he wrote for, of course, was brass. And Gabrielli's brass music was written for instruments which, of course, were nothing like the modern brass instrument of today. But his music for brass is still considered must-have repertoire for the modern brass ensemble. We're going to do an antiphonal piece of his today. Much of his music was antiphonal in nature, that is, with two different brass choirs, uh, in different parts of the cathedral, or in this case, on different sides of the stage, in our case here. And uh, kind of in a call and answer type of style, where they kind of echo each other. Matter of fact, this is Canzon on Echo, Duo de Simi Tony, a uh, 10, for 10 players. So we're going to do the Gabrielli Canzon for you at this time.
I mentioned it uh, briefly this morning over at the church service. When I was a teacher here at uh, Campion, I had a baritone player named Joel Jennings, who was an avid and very enthusiastic and very talented euphonium player. Joel played for me for four years here at Campion and then came to Union College at the same time I did and played for me again there in the band and in the brass ensemble. Unfortunately, uh, Joel uh, lost the battle to cancer this past spring and in June, a bunch of us who knew Joel and had played with him over the years got together and did a brass concert for his memorial service at Denver South Church uh, in the middle of June there. And um, as sad as it was, it was, a, it was a great and happy experience to be able to play brass music together and to think of Joel and how much fun he would have had playing with us then and now. Matter of fact, I think everybody who played in that group is on the stage behind me here today. But the thing I wanted to mention too is that this weekend came about because of that. We were down there, there were nine of us that were playing in that ensemble and Chris Williams, who used to be the director uh, here at Campion, or one of them, and uh, he came up with the idea that he said, hey, this is really great, we ought to do this again, how about we do it at Campion in the fall? And so he got busy and started organizing all of this and contacted us and invited me to come back and conduct it, and of course I said yes. What band director in his right mind would not want to conduct a group of 20 fine musicians in a bunch of exciting music? So here we are, and um, the one thing which all of us who knew him couldn't help but think, and we've talked about it amongst ourselves, is how much Joel would have enjoyed being here this weekend to play with us. But uh, we do have the hope, don't we, that we'll all see him and all our other loved ones that we miss again someday. In the meantime, uh, we're going to continue our program here. And what's next, guys? Oh, yeah. We're going to do a, um, a hymn tune that uh, the origin of which is lost in time. It's an old southern folk hymn. The music, though, the words, I should say, set to this music is by Isaac Watts. And I think most of us have heard the name Isaac Watts. He's called the godfather of English hymnody and wrote over 8,000 hymns and uh, I think has 20 or 25 of them, uh, texts, his texts are in our hymnal, our church hymnal. Uh, this, as a matter of fact, um, when I can read my title, clear is number 464 in the books in front of you. This was arranged by um, uh, Dwight Gustafson. Dwight Gustafson was the chair of the music department at Bob Jones University for over 40 years, uh, award-winning composer and arranger, and uh, did a number of uh, early American hymn tunes set to brass ensemble. This has always been one of my favorites. When I can read my title clear.
allow me to brag just a little bit again. This next piece is also arranged by a former student of mine, Mr. Donald Huff, graduated from a different academy in this union, but he did come to Union College. He's currently the band director at Spring Valley Academy back in Centerville, Ohio. But he arranged this music, uh, which we're going to do next. It's a medley of three uh, spiritual tunes. Give me that old time religion. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? And will the circle be unbroken?
just going to make a slight shift in the program, and uh, if any of you are excited to hear Bach, come back at 6.30 and I'll play it then. But uh, for this afternoon, I am going to play a rather well-known piece by request. And it's uh, a fun request for me because back in my time in Campion, I learned organ basically on this instrument, and this is one of the pieces that I spent hours agonizing over uh, as a teenager. It's called Toccata, and it's by a uh, French composer, Charles Marie Vidor. That's the best French I can muster. But uh, he was an organist and uh, composer and teacher in Paris. And at that time, it was in vogue to write symphonies for the organ. So these were large-scale, multi-movement works designed to showcase the organ as a symphony unto itself. And they would often end these symphonies with toccatas. So that was a form that was quite old in, uh, in history, and it comes from a root word that just means to touch. So these are pieces that are designed to show that the organist knows how to properly play the instrument. So this is Vidor's famous toccata from his fifth symphony.
I'd like to take a moment now to introduce a few of the members of our group. I'd like to start with uh, the current Campion Academy players. We have a couple in here. So guys, stand up. There you go. Definitely. I apologize. I'm an old man. I've forgotten your names. Uh, Addison. Addison and Caleb. Okay. Thank you guys. I'm glad you're here. Um, all the Campion Academy alumni, would you stand up now? Anybody who went to or graduated from Campion? There you go. Okay. There's your alumni brass. In addition to that, we have uh, several former Campion Academy band directors in the group. Uh, in no particular order, I'm just going to take them start in the front row and work my way back. Mr. Bob Duncan here. <laughs> when did you teach here? 2000 to 2002? Okay. Uh, next we have Yves Clouset. Is that right? Okay. Yves was here the last 10 years? Yep. Until just last year. Okay. There you go. Um, going to the back row, Dr. John Boyd. John was here from 86 till when? 86 to 94. 86 to 94. Okay. And then going down, Mr. Chris Williams. You were here when? Okay, and his wife, Malia, also directed the band for a while, right? Okay. But she declined to play with us today, so. Who else have we got here? Oh yeah, on the end over here. George Swanson. I'm trying to remember, your, I'm trying to remember the years, what, 76 to 79? That's it, okay. So there, there you have, what, one, two, three, four, do what? Four or five, five band directors from, from the Academy are here this afternoon. Do what? You directed band too? Oh, okay, well I hadn't gotten that yet. <laughs> and then of course you heard from the current director this morning, and I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank. I'm an old man, I'm drawing a blank. Tell me your name. Cecilia. Cecilia, okay. Very nice job this morning, by the way. I enjoyed all your groups. Now, the rest of the people behind me don't necessarily have a connection uh, by being alums or anything, but they're friends of ours and they agreed to come play with us today and we're very happy that they did to help us out, fill us out. <laughs> this next one is the second of the Isaac Watts hymns that we're going to do today. Isaac Watts, of course, wrote the uh, text. It's number 154 in your hymnal. The music was uh, to a tune called Hamburg, which came along a little bit later, and it wasn't uh, actually put together with this text until sometime in the late 19th century. Um, this is an arrangement by an American composer, again, named Kirk Camp Kirkland, who is, again, an award-winning composer of music for choral, band, and other ensembles. We're going to be joined on the piano, this one, by Dr. Howard. This is When I Survey the Wondrous Cross.
Feel like an Einzug. If you speak German, forgive me, but that's as close as I can get to the title of this next piece. It's also called ceremonial entry, or processional entry, or solemn entrance. You can take your choice. By Richard Strauss, this was uh, written in 1909, composed for the or British Order of Chivalry called the, uh, that's the Order of St. John. It's a order of chivalry which was chartered by Queen Victoria some years ago now. But uh, so it was written on commission for them. It's uh, one of the few pieces that uh, Strauss wrote that was actually just for brass ensemble. It was actually originally scored for 15 trumpets, four horns, four trombones, two tubas, and a set of timpani. Since that time, it has been scored, rewritten, uh, revised, uh, rearranged numerous times for all sorts of ensembles, from orchestras to bands to uh, a woodwind group I heard do it one time. Didn't have quite the same ring to it, but nevertheless. Uh, it's also been done for brass and organ, which is how we're going to do it today to finish up our concert. Dr. Howard will be joining us on this one, the Solemn Entry by Richard Strauss.
you very much. I understand there's another concert or program going on in here in about one, well, it just ticked over to 4.15, so there you go. So we appreciate you coming out this afternoon. We invite you to stick around for the, I think it's a choral sing-along, if I'm not mistaken. So thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you again sometime.